Hey guys, uh, so I want to talk about this tool, Twin Motion. It's pretty new, or I, I don't know if it's actually new, but it is a recently uh, Epix Games purchased it and they made it free, so or at least up till November, and you can um, use it and it's pretty easy. What it is is you download an add-in and it ties into that and then. Uh, or it ties into Revit and then you can push it into twin motions uh, your models and stuff so I'll, I'll show a preview of that and before that um, I'll we'll just take a look at the website um, so here is the twin motions um, link so just Google twin motions and then come up to this link here and then you can click on get it free until November so if you click on that it'll take you to this page where you can then download the epics game launcher um, this is kinda confusing so you download that and then afterwards you come down here and you download the plugin so this is just a plugin so this is gonna create that integration between uh, Revit and Twinmotion after you download this plugin uh, open up your Unreal um, the epics launcher and and there you can come up to the twin motion tab this may not be here until you actually download the add-in when you download the add-in you then can come up here to the epics uh, game launcher then twin motion tab and then you can come down here and this should say install and then from there you can actually uh, then launch it so uh, you can open up Revit and and then what I've noticed is it, it, it does have some connectivity problems uh, at first if you have you know open up Revit and then uh, make sure to have this or um, uh, to uh, launch twin motions before you come into Revit and then see it in uh, twin motion so I've got twin motion open so as you saw I just press C in um, twin motion and we'll just go ahead and take a look at that so as you see and if you're not familiar with this project this is the template project that comes with Revit um, you it's just the basic architectural model if you don't have this uh, you can actually go to the Autodesk website and find it there so this is pretty much the um, twin motion interface and as you see, what's really cool is it replaces, you know, the same way that Inkscape works, except for these these people have motion to them. Um, you know, each person's kind of different. Or you know, this this lady's talking on the phone. Here's the car, and then some of the trees, you know, just like Inkscape would do, kind of replaces the trees. So this this does the same thing. and then it gives it some motion and I think if we select on these trees we can then change the season so we can actually change it to winter if we, we wanted to visually you know represent this space as uh, um, you know uh, in a different season and from what I can tell is um, because you can actually go into Revit and then do some updates you know so so let's you know take a look at well let's take a look at this lady so we see her there I'll take Revit and what we'll do is just shift her over a bit and then you know it's not live update maybe that'll be something they kind of create uh, but you have to actually push that data over and and you can see it's now updated it actually went in there and changed the lady so so uh, some I think is you know because I can actually come in here and then shift um, this person around and it has like a little gizmo down here Alright, um, 
So messing around with it for a second, uh, I figured out that if you are directly connected with Revit, you actually can't update anything in here. So I can't grab this lady and move it. I would have to do all the updates back in uh, Revit. But you can add stuff to the scene. So like I've added this tree and you can shift these things around because um, it was added afterwards. So it's not necessarily, you know, uh, in the Revit model. So um, uh, keep that in mind when you're messing with this. If you do want to start kind of configuring uh, the model around a bit, if you actually just close Revit, you then have access to do whatever you want with these models and start moving this around as a, a separate asset um, or a separate project just all by itself in twin motion. So um, so I don't know the entirety of this tool, but I just want to show a few of the cool things. So I'll just expand this screen all the way. And then down here, we have um, this little button that looks like a uh, city. And there's context. So this is pretty cool where we can actually zoom into a portion, um, you know, maybe it's a site that's being built, whatever the case is, we can kind of zoom in and then get the conceptual masses of that area. So we select that and then grab, it's then downloading it. And then now we can see that conceptual mass. And this is a good opportunity to real, uh, real quick show you. Uh, the little project browser. So over here to the right, you can kind of see the different elements uh, within the Revit model, and then also all the different other assets that you're bringing in here. Um, and then from here, you can actually hide them as well. So if I zoom all the way down to the bottom, I'll probably see, uh, here it is. So I can see the context, and then now I can kind of move that out of the way. You can see there, uh, when it brings it in, it does grab trees and stuff if it sees it. So it's a pretty, you know, easy tool to get your, your stuff in there and then kind of show um, some context, give, it, give this uh, building some context on the site. Um, also, another thing real quick is the paths. So we can grab a character path. We can draw it. And I can just kind of draw it draw a path and you can come in here to the end yeah so come down to the end you can end it there or say if we want this to kind of go out here um, you can actually just press escape and there you go you kind of got a path where people are walking on and what's really neat is, well, the people are, are what's really cool, I think. Um, just the fact that everybody kind of is unique and, um, you know, they all have their, their um, the motions. So if you actually select on that path, you can um, change the type. So you can change the different uh, ethnicities, which is kind of cool. And you can come down here and change um, uh, what they're wearing. So there's a pretty good amount of options here. Over here we have the width too, so I thought that was kind of cool. You just go up to say how big the crowd is. Say we want it like that. And then we can change the density. Change the direction. Um, if you just want them to stand there, you can do that as well. And this exact, you know, tool palette is the exact same as if you wanted to do the vehicles as well. You know, it's just... Uh, pick this and then just draw a path really it just have some other options with speed um, traffic rules which is kind of cool um, uh, lane offset and then two lanes
You can also change the lane count. And then one more pretty cool thing is you can add vegetation and stuff and like weather, uh, lighting, and the ocean. Well, the ocean's kind of cool. I'll show that real quick. You come in here, um, turn it on, and then you can see kind of what happens. And I thought this was neat. If you actually, uh, you saw it kind of go blurry. If you go in the water and then come out, it kind of has water dripping off there. And then you can change the type of water it is. So say if you've elevated this building, added a site to it and stuff, you can start kind of putting water in different places. So I'll turn this off and come over here to the left. If we click this and go up a few, you can see all the different assets. So we have materials that we can apply to different things, vegetation, furniture, characters, vehicles. Uh, it has quite a bit. Um, and I guess user library would be your personal stuff, which I don't have any. So if we go back, furniture, um, you know, we've got home, living room, kitchen, grab that, chairs. Uh, it, from what I can tell, it has a good amount of stuff in there that you can go in there and grab. You know, we can start kind of souping up this space, making it look real nice uh, visually, and then creating a really cool render out of that. Or a uh, 3D VR video thing. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this tool. As you see, it's kind of easy to use. Just a few clicks to do some really cool stuff. Um, you know, everybody kind of is moving around. One more thing I thought was kind of cool. They have animals in here. So I think it's in characters, uh, animals. So we can come in here and add a cow. And then that cow is just kind of hanging out, you know, eating the, uh, <coughs> eating the concrete there. Uh, you can add a bird or butterflies. And I just, you know, the coolest thing for me is the motion that's kind of there. Um, you know, everything, ha you know, is, it, it's real, you know. So, you know, for example, if you're in a, um, uh, say you're doing a hospital or whatnot, you can kind of have people going down specific paths and stuff like that. You can show um, visually different, you know, a lot of different things. And I'm sure there's a lot more coming with this tool. So I just wanted to show this off. And uh, I would love to know what other folks are doing or if there's anything you want to share. Um, I'd love to see it. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Thanks a lot.